Good day everyone, I am Jason van Yerden and I'm the registered dietitian at RED Village Care. And I'm very excited to share with you guys today my 3-7 Lockdown Nutrition Survival Guide. So guys, what is this 3-7 principle that we have to go through? And before we go into that, I want to just share with you guys that you know our world has been thrown upside down and so have our eating habits and the way that we exercise, guys. There's a lot of things changed in our world and we must expect that our diet habits are also going to follow. So on that, we must realize that a lot of us are going to be looking around, you know, on the internet or from a friend, you know, of a diet or exercise program that worked. And on that is that if we take a hundred people and we give all those people the exact same exercise and or exercise program, that they will all have different results. They'll all have different experiences. And yes, for a few of them, maybe it works perfectly and they will be the people on social media sharing, wow, this diet, you know, this exercise program is the way to go. But what about all the other people that fall away? And we don't normally hear about that because who wants to share that I followed this exercise program and it actually went really bad well i followed this diet program and you know, i actually gained weight or you know i was more moody all those type of things you won't hear that but what you will hear and what you will see and what stands out are those success stories but is it because not because it is suitable to them is it more practical to them and for where they are and their caloric requirements and all those type of things so as we must realize that a dietitian will help you get for specific diet advice for you and your goals and what's practical for you. So guys, let us go into the three realizations. Realization number one, and that is your health is not measured on the bathroom scale. Guys, we must remember that we are in a pandemic and we do need to be kind to ourselves. And a lot of us know that our health is not just the number on the scale, but it is our overall physical health, our emotional health, and our mental health. So guys, be kind. You cannot compare, let us say, you know, let's say it's July. We cannot compare last year July to this year July, or you know, this season that you're in compared to another, or to someone else's season and how they're experiencing it. Guys, we are in a pandemic. You do need to be kind to yourself and your health is not just measured on the bathroom scale. Realization number two, and that we must realize that the most effective diet out there is, drum roll, drrr, it is the one that you stick to. So guys, I could quote a whole bunch of studies here, but guys, we must just know what the science says is that the best diet is actually the one that you stick to. Of course, it needs to be nutritionally sound. I mean, if it's, if it's those, you know, only have this type of food, type of diet, or it's completely cutting out, you know, a few fundamentals of nutrition, of course, it's not going to fly. But we must realize that the diet that is best for you is the one that you stick to. And that is why, where dietitian comes in. We help make a diet or you know, a lifestyle for you that is practical for you, that is affordable for you, it's simple enough, and that you'll actually be able to stick to it, that you'll actually be able to apply it to your life. So guys, just know, don't type in, you know, the best this and the best that. It, the best diet for you is gonna be the one that you stick to. So if you find, you know, that there's these special shakes or the special type of food that you hate and you know you actually hate this type of food and it's in there but you're like oh but if it's going to help me get those results guys that is not the way that you should be eating and dietitian is going to help you make you know put those foods in your diet that you love and enjoy we just have to alter it a bit guys i'm going to stand a little bit closer for this but we must realize that we do not need to suffer in order to get success a lot of people feel that if you know they are hating the food that they are eating or they're hungry or the exercise that they are doing is making them suffer and they feel awful you know then they feel like wow that is effective guys you know this diet is working you know I'm suffering guys you do not need to suffer in order to get results say that as many times as you need to to yourself be kind Realization number three is that the main factor or your foundation in what you eat is your environment. So guys, let us say that you go out to a restaurant and or you know you get takeaways or the place that you're ordering takeaways from, you know, if you're getting it online, you know, is a place that basically only sells inverted commas, you know, unhealthy foods. 
compared to if you put yourself in a situation where there are healthier, you know, a healthier restaurant, you are setting yourself up for success because that's your environment that you're putting yourself in. So let us take another example. Let us say that uh, you know you're at, you are at work or you're at home and you're hungry, and the only thing really around that you can quickly grab is let's say you know, sweets or a packet of chips or something like that or cookies that you just overeat on. But guys, you cannot eat something if it is not there in the first place. So if we surround ourselves, you know, we, with healthy alternatives, let's say some yogurt, you know, let's say some low sugar yogurt and some, you know, apples and, you know, other fruits and other healthy, healthy snacks, like let's say popcorn, guys, I love popcorn, popcorn is so great, but, you know, we have popcorn there instead of, which takes a few minutes to make compared to, let us say, a whole bag of chips. So guys, your environment plays such a big role. If you know that you shouldn't be drinking this very sugary drink at home, but you can't help yourself, if you remove it from the situation, um, you know, if you don't have it there and you, 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 know, you replace it with something healthier maybe, then that is then your new environment and it's going to greatly affect how you eat. So guys, those are my three realizations. Let us get into the seven practical tips that you can apply in the Lockdown Survival Guide. Practical tip number one, and that is layer your goals. Because in this time, I've actually found a few people almost doing like a New Year's resolution type of a thing of, you know, you know, now's enough, you know, life has changed. I'm going to, you know, do this and this and this with my exercise. I'm going to do this and this and this with my mental health. I'm going to, you know, do yoga and, you know, do all these interests, you know, all these extra things. And I'm with my diet. I'm going to cut out this. I'm going to cut out this. I'm only going to buy this. And I'm going to get eight hours of sleep. And I'm going to, you know, do this and this and that. And it's so many things. And genuinely what happens is that we put in a lot of energy, you know, medium amounts of energy into those things. And we're just exhausted and they all kind of collapse together. And then we feel really bad for ourselves and that we haven't really achieved all those things. And I think many of you may be nodding your heads if you kind of, you know, apply that to New Year's. You know, those New Year's resolutions that you had. Because we're halfway through the year, let's reset it. But guys, let us layer our goals. Let me tell you what that means. What I want you to do is write down or in your mind, think of about five goals that you want to achieve. And then only try for the next four to six weeks, even if it is just two weeks, if you're a bit impatient, to just do one or two of those things. So let's say, for example, you know you should probably go for a run three times a week, then do that, make that your goal. Another thing you can do is, let's say you wanna do a bit of meditation, let's say for your mental health, you are then gonna do every day, you are then gonna do five minutes of meditation, um, and you may ask, how does this fall into you know, nutrition? This thing is, guys, our mental health plays a massive, massive role. We're going to actually get to that in another one of the steps further. But then let's say with the diet, you say that you're going to have more fruit. Then maybe then just try and get you know, those apples or those fruits that you have there and just focus on those one or two things. Just apply that. It's great to have all those other goals. But once you nail, so to say, once you've got the lockdown on those one or two goals, then you can then layer on. So even if, so you can imagine, you know, if this is now a cup or something, um, or like a boulder, that you know, I've got that down, right? You've got those one or two habits down, and then you try and layer something else on. Even if this top layer thing is overwhelmed and it falls away, you generally have your first layer of solidified habits, and then you can build on and then on and then on. Don't try and achieve everything all at once. Practical tip number two. Double the portion, half the trouble. So guys, hear me out. Let us say, for example, that you know you really struggle with lunches in the day. You know, breakfasts are great, you know, you have your cereal, or something nice and easy, and then supper's great, because at the end of the day, you, you know, you're cooking and that's great. But in the middle of the day, you don't have time. You're busy, you're at home, there's distractions. For you to make a full meal, uh, it's gonna be a mission. So you maybe grab something of this and grab something of that, to have a bit of a snack of this. It's a bit disordered. But what if you make a double portion of supper or let's say it's reversed and you struggle at supper, why don't you make a double portion of lunch and then you've made it the way you like, you can incorporate you know, different, let's say, lean proteins and vegetables and those type of things that you put good effort into, make a double portion and you can have it for supper. And if you don't wanna have the same food two times a day, why not put it in the fridge and have it the next day at that problem area time? Very, very easy way. It's almost the same amount of effort to let's say, cook three chicken breasts than it is to cook Let's say six. Practical tip 
Number three, sleep away the cravings. So guys, many of you may be thinking, but Jason, look, I want the nutrition tips, man. I know sleep is important, but like, let's get onto the nutrition stuff and hear me out. So guys, the quality and quantity of our sleep greatly affects our mood for the next day and our cravings, guys. We have, you know, a hormone called ghrelin that makes us hungry and we have another hormone called leptin that makes us feel full. And dietitians can help optimize that with your diet, but we must realize that our, the quality and quantity of our sleep also affects the regulation of those hormones. And if we've had very poor quality of sleep, there's been several studies showing that you might have a higher reliance on you know, quick energy carbohydrates because your body hasn't fully rested, so it has a higher level of requirement for you know, those quick sugary things to get that boost to your brain that it can work optimally. Guys, just for interest, I mean, the brain is about one to two percent of the, you know, the weight of the body, but it takes up about 30 percent of the energy requirements. So guys, if you aren't giving it rest, we're going to have to fuel it with its, you know, kind of a, give it a boost with regards to those extra sugary type of things, which we know is adding to our calories and not really helping us much. So guys, sleep away the calories and just get some good quality and quantity sleep. Number four for the practical tips, and that is just keep an exercise log. Guys, it is super simple. Just make yourself a calendar Monday to Sunday, and then let's say, you know, week one, week two, week three, week four, and all you do is that you just write down what, ex that, what exercise you did. Let's say ran for 20 minutes, or, you know, did an upper body resistance training, or, you know, did skipping, or did yoga, or whatever, you know, a certain exercise online class, and you write it down. And you may think, look, that's a bit silly, but actually, and it's amazing, and I see this so many times with my clients, is that you write down the exercises that you're doing, and after a week, you're like, okay, cool, I wrote it down. Then you go into the second week and then you actually kind of realize, wow, I wasn't, I'm not, you know, not really getting the results that I want. You know, I, I don't know, you know, but you actually look at the, what you've achieved before and you're like, but was it, act, how much exercise it was it actually really? You realize, oh, you know, I ran a lot, but you realize you only ran like, you know, two times or you only did, you know, one leg session for that week and no upper body or something like that. So that you kind of actually put it down and actually see where am I going wrong? Because if I'm mean, thinking about it now, for the last two weeks, can you remember how many times you did what exercises and all that? Probably not. And if you do, great on you. But for us, we can actually then compare, you know, how we, are we building up? You know, last week I did 15 minutes of running, let's say, now I'm going to maybe do 20. Or maybe instead of three times a week running for 15 minutes, I'm not going to run two times a week for half an hour or something like that. You change it up and you record it. Guys, it's so simple, but it has such a powerful effect. Practical tip number five, and that is just need it. So what does it mean just to need it? So guys, it is N-E-A-T. It is your non exercise activity thermogenesis practical tip number six guys get that sun and you may many of you may be saying jason i want nutrition advice why are you telling me about the sun guys it is about well one of the things is about getting enough vitamin d vitamin d has been shown um, or a lack of it has been shown to have an effect on mental health and as we spoke about in realization one that your health is you know, it's not just, you know, it's on the scale and your physical health, it is also your mental and emotional health. That, so make sure your vitamin D levels are up. Many, many people are suffering from depression. And it's just, so this is one of the factors that we can fall in there, and even just general anxiety. So guys, and as well, how do you normally get sun? You go for a walk, you take the dogs, you know, you play with the dogs outside, you know, you go for a jog or something like that. Or maybe, you know, you're on a phone call, why not stand up and walk around, um, you know, outside or even just walking in the office, burn those extra calories, but go outside, get that vitamin D, and you're hitting, you know, you're hitting a few goals at once without realizing it. Guys, get that sun. It is so important for you and your mental health, and it makes, and it actually affects the way that we eat as well. Practical tip number seven, and that is, I've actually saved the best for last week because we normally start our day with this, and that is that the breakfast is the most important meal of the day. 
And, but hold on, you guys must just realize that breakfast is break fast. So if you, you know, break your fast, you have your first meal of the day at one o'clock in the day or 11 o'clock, that is your breakfast, that is your break fast. So what I, want, what I mean on that is just make sure that your first meal of the day is generally a high fiber one um, or, and or, um, actually I like to combine the two, get a good amount of protein in. It's gonna keep you full for long, keep those blood sugar levels stable, and it's gonna set you up for the rest of the day. So guys, you do not need to eat as soon as you wake up. If it suits you, if you need to, great, do it. But um, you know, when you do eat, you know, maybe don't eat when you you know hungry, but eat at a time that suits you best to keep your energy levels stable. That sets you up for the rest of the day. Many of us know if we eat something that's high in sugar, uh, you know, we didn't really have a good breakfast. Our sugar is going to go up and down, up and down. Then we want to snack more, and it actually just you know kind of destroys the rest of our day. Guys, let breakfast be the most important meal of your day. Focus on that and generally a lot of things fall into place. All right guys, so that was my three, seven, nutrition survival guide for you guys i hope you liked it please leave a like please leave a comment share it with a friend or family member enjoy it keep safe and remember that guys dietitians are here for you we are here to make your the way that you eat your diet how you normally eat practical for you affordable adaptable and enjoyable guys remember you do not need to suffer in order to get results a dietitian is here to help you have a wonderful day Keep safe and bye. Cheers.